So with us today is our vice president and branch manager of this location, which is the Buckeye office, Sundra Bachman. And I will be joining Sundra as well in the uh, presentation. So Sundra. Um, before I get started, I do just want to acknowledge the frontline staff that's also helping here today. We have Karen and Mike, um, both assistant branch managers at our Metropolitan Bank. We have Jennifer from our IT department. Um, and they are a huge part in finding um, customers coming in and then finding the fraud before the customer actually does something that would make them lose money or funds. Um, and I just want to acknowledge how great they are and they really do help us with stopping fraud at the teller line or in our CSR offices. Give them a round of applause. Yeah. So as Jack said, we're just going to go over a few of the things that we've seen with our customers. One of the larger things is Publishers Clearinghouse. If they call you and say you won or if you didn't enter that, um, chances are they're just scamming you. They're trying to get your money. Um, if anybody calls for your information, again, please do not give your information out. We've seen scams where the Social Security office is calling our customer. And right after that, immediately following that phone call, a police officer will call the customer and say, yes, that was the IRS calling you. Please give them the information. And then the customer is like, well, the IRS called me. Now the police called me to confirm that it was the IRS. It was neither. Just and and about, one, about those kind of calls, the IRS calls, the Social Security calls, they're never going to call you on the phone. What they're going to do is they're going to send you a, mail, a, a letter in the mail saying that you're getting audited or, or they need some, any information off of you. But here's the thing, with those calls from the Social Security office, from the IRS, it may say on your caller ID that it is from the Social Security office, so you would think it's actually them. That's what they call spoofing. So there's a way that they can spoof the caller ID to let you think that that's who that is. So you gotta be very, very careful with that. So please, whatever you do, if, the, if you get those types of calls, just just ignore it, hang up. Worst comes to worst. If you really you really want to know, call directly to the office. And don't use the caller ID, the number that's on the caller ID. Use the actual number that you get either through your paperwork or through the through the website or whatnot. I just want to share something that happened to my sister. About six to eight months ago, she called so her local social security was up in Washington. And she said they were saying something that they had a free gift for her, and she thought, I don't want a free gift yet. And they ended up hanging up on her. And that was a call she made to the Social Security office. So she hung up, she dialed the same the exact, she said, I thought it was maybe a home phone number. She had the exact correct. And she called it back the second time. They said, the morning Social Security, and it was completely different. It was a whole different conversation. So she initiated the conversation yeah. and somehow was redirected. And she said, oh, there's no one who's thing I take this for you. Got sort of like rage, and she didn't want it. But the second time she called back, she got through and it was So that's, then you're thinking, well, gosh, if I'm making the call and I can't even be sure I'm getting where I need to go. So, yeah. yeah, no, but that's good that you brought that up. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. I got a call last week from my own name and number. Yes. <laughs> I've had that too. Yeah. I look at my caller ID, it's me. I'm like, how am I calling myself? How's that possible? So I'm saying people you know. are spoofing. Basically, here's my take on that. If you don't know who the who the caller ID number is, if it's not like your your, your grandchildren, your 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 children, your your friend, or anything like that, if you don't recognize the number, don't pick it up. Let it go to voicemail. If it's so important, they'll leave you a message, and then that way you can call them back. Okay. Yes. Just like he had his own number, I had gotten that too. Yeah. And he said, you know, block the numbers you don't want to get. What are you blocking? I know on like on iPhones and stuff, you can block numbers that come. So every time I get one of those numbers, that I just block the phone number. Yeah, but are you calling? That they could change the name. Well, yeah, they can always change the number. So, so. What, what are you blocking? You're blocking their number. The that number. They're calling the, the number that's shown on the call ID. Yeah. 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 Be your don't, it could be. So don't answer. It. Like I said, best thing to do is just don't. If you don't recognize the number, just don't answer. It. How often do you call? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, how often do you call yourself? Exactly. Yeah, I know. Yeah, but with the spoofing, um, Phoebe and Kitty had a, a huge 
reach with um, people. It was they were spoofing the number. It wanted to, they called the customer. It said it was coming from B, B, and T. So in that case, when you're calling yourself, they're not physically calling from your number, but your number is your name is popping up. So they're spoofing your name. So if you would block that, it's probably actually from a different number. If you go onto your cell phone bill and look at that number, it wouldn't be your number that the phone call actually came from. Okay. So if you block it, that should help. Um, and again, with that happening with bb &T, this can happen with spoofing the number to anyone. If Nutripoli Bank calls you and you don't feel like, why would Nutripoli Bank call and ask for my account number? Why would they ask about my checking? We would never call you and ask you for those things. Please just hang up the phone if you don't feel, if you say, oh, we need to talk to you about an automatic transfer. If you don't feel that it's from Nutripoli Bank, say, you know what, I'm sorry, I just let me have your name, I'll call you right back, and call the number that you know for Nutripoli Bank. Plus, if worse comes to worse, as well, in the folders is my business card. Feel free to give me a call. I'd be more than happy to assist you however I can direct you who you need to talk to. Going back to the Social Security and the IRS, um, if you would get a letter from the IRS, sometimes you know we, we would think if they're calling, it's a scam because the IRS sends letters. But now they're actually sending letters because that's what everybody's telling <laughs> So um, here are a few points. Um, just your contact information, just review everything. If it states IRS, you wouldn't really get a letter from the IRS. It would say the United States Treasury on it. So just little things like that. And if you're not sure, you can take it to your accountant. You can take it to the police before you do anything. You can bring it into the bank. That is what we are here for. That is what the police is there for and what your accountants are there for. They're there to help, to help you with these things. And we've assisted a lot of our customers. They're not really bank related. I had one customer one time who thought was a victim of fraud on their credit card. They came, we looked at it, we helped them out. So yeah, we'll, we'll hear, we're here for you. We're here for you. Yes, ma'am. We had an interesting, uh, you don't mind me telling you. Paul <laughs> 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 said it was from you guys. And that they needed to do something to work out. And you know, while I'm hung up, they called the next day and said they were coming to the house for paperwork. <laughs> She didn't know whether to stay home, whether to come into our house. And, it, and, and that instance, absolutely, you should, I would have called the bank back on the number that you know. And in that instance, if you, if nobody at the bank knew, I we rarely go out to people's homes and do anything. It's usually a circumstance where they can't get out to us, and we'll visit their house. But that's because the customer initiated it. If you didn't initiate somebody coming out to set something up for you, um, I can't say we never go out to houses because there are cases we do, but we wouldn't have called <coughs> we're going to do this or that. And then just call your police, call the branch number that you know. Well, they told her they were coming to take work close to her account. Yeah. Yeah. And she was afraid to stay home. Yeah. No, so my, my son is a state trooper. We talked to him. Oh. He said, well, they're not going to come in for you long. <laughs> Oh, is that where the caller ID? Well, <coughs> but that's where a lot, a lot of this is over the But yeah. I don't know why they would have scared her and what concerns me is well, that's they didn't follow through. Are they going to call again? They, they probably yes, will call again. Is she talking? Oh, goody. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, if you don't if you don't recognize the caller ID, yeah. don't answer. Yeah. And that, that is another big thing. We do have a lot of cases where these people call the people and they keep calling and calling and hounding on them and they physically scare the customers. And when you're in a situation where you feel afraid, that's when you get the police and call and call the police. Um, yeah, but you don't, you don't know. I'm concerned that since she engaged with them, they might call back. They, if you engage with them, they will keep calling and calling and calling and they'll try different things. Yeah, if that didn't work, they might try to... You live in your policy. She's a good relationship with the bank. There's no reason to think the bank is going to do anything. But, well, they may call and say they're from the Social Security. They may call and say that her car 
warranty is expired and they want they'll try different things it'll be the same people calling but one of them names that other other scammer I'm sure they do they have there's lists out there well, if a scammer knows that you will answer your phone yeah but I didn't I said no I don't want to renew anything because I don't know I'm not be driving so yes and that's the best thing to do but that that is one of the things they're doing right now they're calling and saying your car warranty is expired you did yeah and what you want to do in those cases if your car warranty is expiring go back to the dealership where you bought that car and they'll be able to help you if you're interested in that don't interact with the people on the phone that are saying it what you said was they they're sending letters that's absolutely that's, that's what we just got there are letters, letters, letters to get a lot of letters now because mm -hmm. yeah. we don't answer the phone that's yeah. good that's good it's usually best um some of the other things when you're purchasing a vehicle online um using ebay Craigslist, items like that we always tell the customer to be very careful um, if you if somebody purchased something from you and you're bringing a check into the, the bank we will more than likely tell you we'll be putting a hold on that check that's not something we normally do but we want to make sure that that check clears before you give the person you're selling the item to them so you want to make sure that money clears unless they're giving you cash um, and that's just a precaution for you. Always make sure you tell them, well, you can bring me a check, but I'm going to make sure that check clears before you get the product, mm -hmm. which is a car, or a sofa, or whatever you're course. selling. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I, I had an instance where um, one of our customers was uh, selling a horse. She put it on, I, I forgot if it was eBay or Craigslist or whatever, whatever one of those things. And what happened was uh, she got a bite off of somebody from Atlanta, Georgia, who wants to buy the horse. Of course, she sends the check, but of course the check is more than she actually negotiated her with. Oh, so supposedly yeah. for shipping and handling or whatever you want to call that, whatever. But the funny thing was, another clue to look at if you're going to sell something online or anybody you know is going to do it, Look at the envelope, look where the postmark is. Mm -hmm. The postmark was from like Baltimore, Maryland or something, which is not even close to Atlanta, Georgia. Right. So that was another thing too. And then we have, we have things in the back of our you know, total line that it's not hundred percent, but we can kind of know whether the check is no good or not sometimes mm -hmm. based on the, uh, depends on the kind of check. And when we, we fed the check through, it rejected every time. So that was kind of, kind of another thing that we have in our arsenal. I mean, it's not 100% effective, but it's still there as a tool. So one of the things I keep in mind is you got to be careful of, of things, you know, if you or if anybody you know is trying to sell something, and, you know, make sure you look at that postal, look at the envelope. And if you're not sure if you get a check, bring it to the bank. We can, like, like Sandra said, we'll most likely. But you got to tell us that, hey, you know, I'm selling something, I got this check, and yes, I'm going to put a hold on it. We're not doing it because we're greedy. We're doing it because we want to protect you. We don't want to see you have a loss or anything like that. So that's one of the reasons why we do that. Um, we also had customers, they've gotten an email from a prospective employer. Um, the employer saying, your starting pay is going to be $300 a week. You know, you keep that $300. First, we're going to send you $1,200. If you could just go purchase gift cards with that additional money and call me with the codes. If you're getting told to do anything with Western Union or gift cards or anything like that, and gift cards are, are huge, they're really pushing the gift cards, it is more than likely a scam. I, I don't know any gift card situations where it's not a scam. Well, here's the thing with gift cards. What, what is a gift card? It's a gift card. It's a card to give as a gift. It's not used for any sort of payment or anything like that. You're not going to pay bills with gift cards. You're not going to pay anything with gift cards. And, and, and especially with um, another thing that's popular with the young people's the iTunes cards. Mm -hmm. You know, that's another thing too. Why would somebody pay me an iTunes card? I want cash, I want check, I want money. I don't yeah. want no iTunes cards, you know? So <laughs> keep that stuff in mind that does it make sense yeah. when, you, when you get stuff like that, a, a gift card, iTunes card, does it make sense? Um, home security systems, again, car warranties, your um, computer viruses, all of those phone calls, 
Sometimes they call people and they don't even have a computer and they're saying, oh, your computer's broken. Yeah. Just be aware, make sure you're... Sandra, I have something on that. I had a customer the other day, um, he has a, an Apple computer. You know, we all, you know, that's popping out Apple computers, iPhones, iPads, all that sort of thing. And what happened was, he actually needed help with his computer, so he Googled the Apple support which he thought was the actual number, but it really wasn't the Apple support. It was actually a fraudster. So guess what? He let the fraudster in to help him out with his problem with his Apple computer. Well, guess what they ended up doing? They ended up putting one of those viruses, keystroke things, and everything. So every time uh, he would like try to access his bank accounts and stuff, they had the passwords, the usernames, and everything. So it just so happened the gentleman was at our office in front of one of our uh, representatives. And as they were talking, he was on his phone and he saw that a transfer was made as he was in the office. Oh. He didn't make the transfer. <laughs> it was going from, uh, I guess, his savings to his checking. And then he got a call that same time. Oh, I need you to send out this money. I think it was for some sort of, I forget what, what, what it was for. But they told him that he needed to send out this money. So here's the thing about that sort of thing is, um, Apple, we found out that Apple, for free, if you take it to the, there's an Apple store down at the, at the Lehigh Valley Mall there, yeah. if you take your computer, whether it's your computer, your iPad, your iPhone, if you take it there, for free, they will clean that out for you. So, you know, in a lot of places they may charge you to do that, but Apple, it's part of their policy. If you feel that, you, you know, your, your phone, your computer was compromised, you can take that there and they'll do it for free of charge. Okay? Yeah. So luckily, um, we ended up changing all his, his internet, his uh, banking information and everything like that, so that, that got uh, cleared up there. So that um, point, one of the major points with Jack's last thing, um, never give out your user ID or your password yes. to your online banking. Um, Jen, I'm going to let you talk a little bit of things they can do if they would accidentally give that information out, how they would handle. The, the um, fraudster would then use their user ID and password to get into your online banking. They can then take a check and mobily deposit the funds like you were getting a paycheck. Um, usually when, after the check is deposited, it will come back as altered or fictitious. They can also create bill pays. So they can pay themselves if they wanted to. Um, that that's information is precious. You don't ever want to give that information out. If you would, for some reason, give that information out, you didn't realize it, contact the bank immediately. Um, we can change your user ID. Our IT department will take care of that. Um, if you didn't, you can change your password in the meantime until you get to call the bank. If you change, keep your user ID, but change your password until you call, at least they can't get in for that time until you get a hold of the bank. If you feel at any point that you have accidentally given out that information or possibly have a virus on your system, please come into the bank, have them, um, we have a computer in the Clawsville branch that you can log into to change your information. Sometimes you don't always want to change your information on that PC because they're going to retrieve that information again. So make sure your computer is clean before you uh, update your password or user. And that's where we always say, make sure you call the bank. Don't just change it at home and think everything's going to be fine. Make sure you call the bank to review everything with the bank and see if anything came out of the account, um, things like that, to make sure that you're um, OK. And just to make sure, I just, if you get anything out of this, especially I mean, with those who have online banking, there's never, ever, ever, ever a reason why you should give your username and password to anybody. Nobody. So please don't do it. Okay? Um, I do want to touch on the debit card. Yes, no. Sorry. I got a question, <clears throat> not pertaining to this bank, but if you have money in a bank account and someone accesses the computer, computer and steals the money, I was told the bank's not responsible for that, that you're on your own type bank. I will let Jennifer go. If you are allowing someone to access your system, that is your responsibility to keep that information safe. But you didn't allow it. I didn't allow it. I wouldn't, I mean, I wouldn't allow it if someone gets into your computer and hacks you for some reason, and they take money, which they can't do easily, take money out of your account, you're on your own, right? I know when it comes to debit card purchases, 
we can do the fraud against the debit card purchases. If I don't understand how they got into your computer. They didn't. I'm just a hypothetical oh, question. Okay. Um, you know. Well, all computers should have antivirus software. So if someone were to try and compromise, I would hope that that virus software would kick them out or whatever. But if someone were to compromise, there's usually a reason how it got compromised. Usually, if you let somebody gain access to your computer, you gave a username and password, or, or, or you maybe you were into like you were in a public place and you used public Wi-Fi. That's why some of the suggestions that were done during the the cybersecurity says don't do these things. Yeah, I, I, when you sign up for our online banking, there is an agreement in terms of conditions you are supposed to read over and agree to. In those terms and conditions. It does basically state that you're responsible for any kind of activity like that. Yeah. And, then, and then the good thing to do is make sure you look at your statements every month. Make sure you go online. Make sure you look at your account banking, activity. Make sure you're looking at your online yeah. banking. Um, that's that, I would say that's how we find a lot of fraud also by people looking at their own account and noticing it, and that helps. Set, set up alerts. We do have within our online banking alerts uh, for deposits, any kind of withdrawals. And, uh, getting your balance on a regular basis sent to your phone, sent to your email, however you would want to be notified on a daily, weekly basis. Yes, sir. This is more of a comment and a warning. I don't know if you've seen this phenomenon up here in this area, but um, mm -hmm. let me see a show of hands. Who actually writes out a check, puts it in an envelope, and mails it out to pay your electric bill, water bill? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Be careful. The United States Postal Service is having a lot of problems with gangs going to blue mailboxes, taking small devices like a water bottle, block of wood, put all sorts of glue all over it, attach a string to it, throws it into the mailbox, pulls all the mail out. They then go back to their stash house or whatever you want to call it, open up every envelope, maybe it's a greeting card. They throw that out. They look for the checks specifically. They then take it, throw it in a bin of acetone. Within five minutes, depending on the time of the ink that you use, either a regular pen or a gel pen, that ink will come off, off the check. They will then rewrite that check instead of $398 for your electric bill or water bill. They will then write it out for $1,000, $1,200. They will incorporate Prostitutes, drug addicts, and other people of that type will go around to different banks cashing these checks. So they give the person $200 to keep you at $1,000. All right? Postal inspectors. There's about 1,600 blue mailboxes in Philadelphia proper. I've already gone ahead and tried to retrofit 900 of them. Half of least resistance. If they can't get into the mailboxes down in Philadelphia, and I've already seen it happen in Bucks County, Montgomery County, Chester hasn't been hit yet. Delco, they're going to come up north. So they're going to hit Northampton, Lehigh counties, Berks counties. So, either use a gel pen to write out your checks, go to the post office, drop them inside, because they're even hitting the blue mailboxes outside in front of the post office. Wow. Or try to do your banking online. What did you notice? Like, it used to be people open the mailbox. Yeah, yeah. Now you can't do that anymore. They tried it, thought that they fixed it by doing just a little bit, they're still getting in there. They're still getting there. So my, like he said, best thing to do, take, unfortunately, I know it's an extra step, but hey, think of it as exercise or something, I don't know. But just go inside to the post office and put it in there. That way you know it's safe. Another thing too is I know some of us have our own mailboxes with a little red flag. But don't put your stuff in there because the fosters will drive around, go in the mailbox and look for stuff that looks like bills and stuff like that to get your information and stuff. And by you putting that and by you, flag up, correct. you're saying, here's my yeah. information. Yeah. Come get it, yeah, it's an invitation. So please don't put, uh, don't put the mail in the mailbox to your mail. If anything, hand it to the postman if yeah. you can. And I know Katrina had spoke against that um, last week during our other fraud seminar, and, and she agrees that the best thing is to just take it to the, because she's heard through all of her courses and training um, of the same thing, that the mail is very dangerous right now. Absolutely. Is there any safe place for us? <laughs> in bed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, I did want to touch on debit cards uh, real quick, just because um, there is a lot of debit card fraud. With our debit cards, we do have set limits, um, and Jen can speak about this, uh, the $1,500 for personal, $2,500 for business, and also there's, you want to talk about the app and how they can turn it on and off, or the debit card they see fraud. Um, if you have our online banking app downloaded on your phone, you can log in at any time and go under our services and turn off your card. If you've, if you've lost it, had your site for a moment, you can turn it off and once you find it, as long as it hasn't been out of your possession or out of your house, you can turn it back on and start using your card again. If at any point that you left it at a grocery store, you left it in the ATM, close it immediately and we would recommend that, that even if that card was given back to you, that that card stays shut down and we reorder you a new one. And we also have a company um, called Fraud Watch that works hand in hand with our debit cards. Um, if they see, I don't know if any of you ever received a call from them, but if they see something out of the norm, um, they will call you. And they sometimes call when you haven't even done a transaction, um, a breach or something like that. They'll alert the customers, let them know. Um, our IT department then shuts down the cards and reissues other cards. Yeah, we have had cases where um, our fraud department will reach out to a customer and leave a message. And our customers are sometimes skeptical <coughs> on calling that back. Feel free to call, call your one of your locations, um, one of the branches, to verify that yes, this is Fraud Watch calling you. Um, and we would request that you <coughs> call them back just to verify the transactions. Because not all the transactions we can see um, on our system. Sometimes there's little test amounts that might hit that we cannot see, but they're seeing, and that might be one of the reasons why they have hot part of your card. And then what happens if like someone has to go on vacation or something? Yeah, and another thing, if you're going on vacation, we ask that you call the bank, let us know the dates you're going on vacation and when you're going on vacation. Um, so our fraud watch knows. If not, you may be out in Oklahoma at a rodeo, and they won't let you use your card because you're not usually out in Oklahoma at a rodeo. So if you're going on vacation, we can list that on your account, and then you'd be able to use your card out there. Question. Yes, sir. I just want to mention that I run on Facebook. I don't do online banking. I figured, hey, they can't hurt me at all. Last month, I was hacked at the Apple store. Somebody bought three iPhones on my account. So you, you don't have to be... You don't have to be involved and they get you. Right. <laughs> and unfortunately, they don't go after the people that do yeah. it. No. Because I said, well, send the phones to me. I'll put the guy like when we answer, okay? But they can't do that. So they don't go after them anymore. They just let them get away with it, right? Yeah. And that's something Katrina brought up last week also. Um, by you not signing into your online banking and not making your credit card accounts, things like that, that's just giving them the opportunity to do it. Even if you just make up a user ID and password and you never use it, at least somebody else can't go into your accounts, um, your credit card accounts, other bank accounts, and make up that information and answer your questions and make up your, your user ID, make up your password and use your accounts. So it is better in some cases to actually make up the information. If you don't use it, fine. At least nobody else would ever be able to guess that information. And Coattailing to what he said, in your packets, there's a book in the right hand side in the back. Uh, everybody has it. What it is, is if you happen to be a victim of a bank theft, you had a, a compromise of some sort or anything. I know there's two different cards there's a gray color, and then there's like a yellowish color, I mean, orangish color. They're both the same book, it's just different covers. But it tells you step by step, if you happen to be a victim of identity theft or a compromise, it tells you what to do. It includes the phone numbers of the uh, credit bureaus. Please give them a call. Put a fraud alert on the account. You can have them freeze your account. That way, if someone were to use, try to use your credit, they can give you a call and verify with you that you know that you are the one that's applying for this loan or utility bill or whatever. So, um, I just have a few more things. Uh, we've had customers be told that they want a car. If you're told you want a car, they then told the customer, well, you have to pay this much in taxes for the car. So you send us that first, and then we'll 
you know, make arrangements for the car. Um, the amount of the taxes didn't even make sense for the amount of the kind of car they got. So just, again, using common sense, trying to, you know, think. If something doesn't feel right, always ask. Gas stations. With gas stations and using your cards, I, I would say the biggest advice is if you are using your debit card, always use your debit card as a credit at the gas station. That way, if there are any cameras that will check your PIN, you aren't entering your PIN at the gas station. If you use it as a credit, you're not putting that PIN information so they can't do a debit. Katrina, you have an insert in the folder about that? Yep, there uh, is a postcard um, all about skimming devices that are specific to gas pumps. There are a few different um, key points that I would encourage you to review. Use a pump that's closest to the convenience store. It gets the most foot traffic. It's going to be less likely to have been tampered with. Also, gas stations are starting to put tape across the door that opens because those skimming devices actually fit deep inside. You can't see it on the outside. So look out for that tape. If the tape has been compromised, if sometimes the tape, if it's been lifted, will say void. Don't use that pump. Go inside and let the convenience store know that there's a problem. Yes, sir. I have a uh, private sector friend of mine that's in the gas pump installation business, and uh, he said the safest way to do this is either if you're going to use your credit card, go inside. Yeah. Best way to do it, of course, is to pay cash, mm -hmm. all right? But the new, well, the latest fourth generation technology of the scammers is as soon as you put your card in there, and if you do use your debit card number, it's being texted to some place in the world. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. they're using cell phone technology. So they don't even have to be there within a day or two to take the, the chip out and then use it. Um, probably the best, well, the problem with the whole gas pump skimming problem is a lot of these companies are owned by a third person. And it costs about $6,000 to upgrade each pump. They don't want to pay the money, right? Because they keep extending when they have to do all this, all right? So, October 2020 is basically when they're supposed to have this all done. So if you've got 10 pumps and you own that gas station, do the math, 6,000 6, times 10, that's a lot of money. Now, I'm not advocating going to Wawa and the new Sunoco stations, but each one of these new pumps has an individual key. You no longer have a barrel key that you can use to open up your shed lock or whatever to get into the gas pump. So each one of those pumps has an individual key held by the support of the station manager. So if somebody does go into the gas pump to insert and install a gas pump scammer, it shuts the pump down. You see the big screen, you see the line going through there. Usually there's alarms go off the whole nine yards. All right? Um, in addition to the tapes that they're putting on somebody's gas, even those are being counterfeited. So somebody peels it off, puts another piece of tape on there, and guess what? You think you're good. So as the young lady just said a few minutes ago, Use the gas pumps close facing the station, okay? Because those are the ones that can be seen. A lot of times, these people that install gas pump skimmers use the ones on the outside. They will actually block the cameras and whatnot while they're installing this thing. It just takes a minute to get it. So just just be careful. Save yourself a lot of headaches. And the last thing, just if people are continuously calling you and you feel threatened, uh, ma'am, as you did, if you feel unsafe please contact the police officer, um, let them know what's going on. They may come and ask to, you know, check your phone, ask for the number they're coming from, but it just makes them aware because they, they'd like to pressure and pressure and pressure you and make you think that they're gonna be on your doorstep when they're really not, and that's just to make you do things. So if you're feeling pressured, of course, call your local police department. Also, maybe for a little bit, go visit a friend, go visit a grandchildren, go visit, you know, your, your relative friend. Maybe at least get out of the house for a little bit just to make you feel safer, you know. And just if somebody case. shows up, don't answer the door. Yeah, call don't please. answer the door. Absolutely. Call the police. Yeah, absolutely. Does anybody have any questions? <laughs> okay, we're going to let Katrina start her fun bingo game. So who wants to have some fun? Enough bad news. Round of applause for Sandra. Thank you. Thank you.